the today's International Space Station update. Joining us here inside of the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center with the Orbit 2 team currently on console, monitoring all of their respective systems on board this orbiting laboratory. Today's team being led today by Flight Director Scott Stover. Joining him at the Capcom position there in the middle, uh, serving as the voice communication link between controllers here on the ground and the astronauts up in space is Anna Fisher. And those astronauts right now, the Expedition 33 crew, uh, currently on their uh, 86th day on board the International Space Station. Uh, you can see the three astronauts here. All the way on the left is Expedition 33 Commander uh, Sunny Williams on her second flight on board the International Space Station. In the middle there, Russian cosmonaut Yuri Malenchenko, a veteran of space flight, uh, currently on his fifth flight. Uh, and then all the way on the right there, Japanese astronaut Aki Hoshide on his second flight, being a veteran of one former shuttle mission. On board the International Space Station today, a lot of work being done for the uh, upcoming arrival of that Dragon uh, spacecraft launched by SpaceX a little bit earlier this week. Uh, Sunny Williams, uh, much of the work she's been doing today focused on that. Uh, she started off relocating one of the laptops that will be used for the robotic capture operations. You were just getting a live view of the space station's robotic arm, which will be used for that. And right now, uh, we're looking at one of the laptops as she goes through some on-orbit training. Uh, Williams will be going through some training simulations for the uh, Dragon rendezvous capture. Also, the vehicle operations uh, also found on the computer for once the craft is docked. She was also uh, gathering some equipment for the Dragon vestibule outfitting, uh, basically the uh, fitting out some of the particulars of the hatch uh, port between the Dragon spacecraft and the International Space Station. She's also spending some time going over all of the cargo being carried up, a total of about 882 pounds of supplies being delivered to the orbiting laboratory uh, from the unmanned robotic Dragon spacecraft. Uh, throughout all these ops today, she's being joined by Japanese astronaut Aki Hoshide, who's also going through some of this uh, on-orbit rendezvous and capture simulation as he'll be uh, standing by with Sonny Williams at the robotic arm controls as they guide Dragon in on its final approach uh, and for eventual berthing to the Earth-facing side of the Harmony module on board the station. Uh, aside from all of these Dragon ops uh, training activities, Hoshide also doing uh, a thorough analysis of the Japanese experiment module's uh, microbiological environment. He was taking some uh, surface water samples and uh, air biocharacterization uh, samples using a, a device known as SWAB, uh, the surface water and air biocharacterization air sampling device. Our third uh, astronaut on board the International Space Station right now, Russian cosmonaut Yuri Malenchenko. Uh, began his day immediately with the Russian Sprut experiment, which is uh, a medical research uh, program designed to uh, study the distribution and behavior of different uh, human body fluids in zero gravity. Uh, gravity, uh, while you're down here on Earth, has a tendency to push all of the fluids in the human body down towards the legs. So once these astronauts are uh, exposed to that microgravity environment for long periods of time, that doesn't happen. So Sprout, one of many uh, biomedical experiments on board the International Space Station, looking to uh, continuously document and track the changes the human body goes through as ex is exposed to microgravity for long periods of time. Aside from that, he was working on a fairly complex uh, physics experiment known as the Kulinovsky crystal. It's a Russian uh, look into studying the dynamic and structural characteristics of uh, different crystal systems uh, that are formed when ions are stored in something known as an electromagnetic trap. Uh, aside from this, he'll be doing some uh, routine uh, maintenance work on board the station, cleaning out some of the filters and replacing a few uh, components inside of the Russian toilet system. All eyes, though, uh, on the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft as it continues its trip towards the International Space Station. Uh, currently scheduled to be grappled uh, tomorrow morning on Wednesday, October 10th at about 6.22 a.m. Central Time. So as mentioned, that SpaceX Dragon vehicle on its way towards the International Space Station. 
This is SpaceX's first commercial resupply mission to the station. Uh, it launched uh, back on Sunday uh, to the ISS from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station nine, in Florida. Eight, seven, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And liftoff. Liftoff of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, launching Dragon to the International Space Station and returning cargo resupply missions to U.S. soil. Starting gravity turn. Acquisition of signal. T plus 45 seconds. One minute and 10 seconds after liftoff, the Falcon 9 will reach supersonic speed, passing through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. Ten seconds later. Through the vehicle max has speed. reached maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is the point where the mechanical stress on the rocket reaches its peak because of the rocket's velocity and the resistance created by the atmosphere of Earth. And again, some replay of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket as it launched. Uh, on Sunday night at about 7.35 p.m. Central Time from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, launching SpaceX's first commercial resupply mission to the International Space Station. That Falcon 9 rocket, uh, designed and manufactured by SpaceX, uh, will have continuing coverage of this mission uh, throughout its duration. Uh, our grapple coverage uh, of the Dragon spacecraft to the International Space Station will begin tomorrow morning at 3 a.m. Central Time. All this uh, setting up in preparation for an expected uh, grapple with that Canada Arm 2, the space station's robotic arm, scheduled to take place at 6.22 a.m. Central Time. Following that, we'll break away for a little while before resuming uh, with final berthing coverage at 8.15 a.m. Central Time, the expected berthing of the Dragon spacecraft to the Earth-facing side of the Harmony module on the International Space Station, targeted for 8.40 a.m. Central Time. Dragon capsule will be delivering about 882 pounds of supplies to our Expedition 33 crew. Uh, inside uh, of those supplies, you'll have about 260 pounds of crew supplies, uh, general items also including food, uh, and also things like clothing and uh, personal items for the astronauts. Uh, there'll also be about 390 pounds of scientific research equipment, along with 225 pounds of hardware and uh, a few other miscellaneous supplies. One of the most uh, important characteristics of the Dragon spacecraft is its ability to uh, deliver mass back down to the ground safely. Uh, currently the only cargo craft designed for re-entry and recovery. Dragon currently scheduled to return a little over 1,600 pounds of supplies. Um, the bulk of this coming from scientific research, uh, as many of these samples and uh, other biological experiments stored on board the International Space Station and some of the freezers for long periods of time uh, require careful uh, transport back down to the Earth's surface that uh, since the retire, uh, retirement of the space shuttle has been uh, unavailable as the, currently the only craft that returns from the International Space Station is the uh, Russian Soyuz uh, crew capsule which has a very limited uh, cargo capability, so the Dragon spacecraft uh, supplying that down mass capability once again to the International Space Station. It'll be returning a little over uh, 1,600 pounds of supplies. 866 of those will be scientific research equipment. Uh, about 500 will be uh, assorted vehicle hardware, 
uh, devices and uh, other hardware as well. Continuing to look through the station's outboard cameras as it crosses just over the southern Pacific Ocean, getting a pretty magnificent view of uh, some of the cloud formations currently uh, over that part of the Pacific with the space station's robotic arm there in the foreground uh, line getting ready to uh, grapple with that SpaceX Dragon uh, spacecraft uh, tomorrow morning. The station's been involved in quite a quite a bit of uh, vehicle activity over the past few weeks with a number of cargo crafts coming and going, uh, SpaceX being the next in line. And then following that, uh, just a few weeks later, our Expedition 33 crew will be expanding by three more members, uh, the next three to launch in the Soyuz TMA-06M spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, uh, being NASA astronaut Kevin Ford, uh, who will be an Expedition 33 flight engineer, and he'll be joined in that Soyuz craft by two Russian cosmonauts, Alag Novitsky and Evgeny Tarelkin. Uh, Novitsky will be the commander of that Soyuz craft. Meanwhile, at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, the crew is in their final two weeks of pre-launch training. So they're, again, in their final two weeks of pre-launch training, currently scheduled to launch uh, from Baikonur on October 23rd. Uh, we have some video that uh, just came through from our Russian feeds of the uh, three crew members preparing to leave uh, and head down to Baikonur. This is really to give you guys like that's right, you have to give us advice. Yes, and I'm looking forward. give it to you. Take all we can get. You say, but what's after you? What's the third? The glories you are making, what would you be? Looking forward to seeing you. Hi, hi. Plus you, Roman. Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, look at you. <laughs> uh, dear friends, let's move in. 
Stay, families, please uh, move back. Please move slightly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 
Oleg, Jenny, Kevin, please come up here. Especially for you. Oleg, into the center, please. So now I have some questions for you. Oleg, what's your impressions? So what do you think? What do you think about the launch? We're fully ready. We're happy. We're glad to go. Please look at the cameras. What camera? Well, I respond to the person who asked the question. Uh, okay. Oleg, how many experiments are planned? What are the most interesting for you? What are you expecting from them? All of them are important for us. Uh, around 50 are planned. So we would really like to fulfill all of them so that those who ordered them are happy. Personally for you, what would you like to try to do? I'll go and try everything, then I'll determine myself and I'll tell you. I'm going to write a blog or to take pictures or what. We'll try to write a blog if we have a possibility. Probably we'll be sending down link in as many photos as possible, videos for the family and friends, colleagues. I'm going to meet New Year's in orbit, how going to a greater family, how going to uh, talk to them. Well, we'll try to maintain communication as much as possible. I don't think we're bored. And it's great to have New Year's in space. And we keep everybody in our hearts. Oleg, do you have that feeling that you're just about to go to space? If not, then when do you expect this feeling to show up? I think this thing is there once you become a part of the cosmonaut core. Just need to make a few final steps on to the launch pad. How often will we be able to talk to your families? Are there any restrictions? I would like to ask the commander. There is no mediator. We have uh, good friends, and uh, our friends are always there for us. For NASA TV, for Kevin, you're leaving today from Star City, Russia, for two weeks for, for Baikonur, Kazakhstan. How are you going to be spending your remaining two weeks down there prior to launch? Well, the reason we're leaving today is uh, so that we can get down there for our fit check tomorrow, our first series of fit checks. It'll be the first time we see the real spacecraft. In, uh, in Baikonur, so we'll climb in tomorrow in flight suits, have a chance to spend some time looking over the spacecraft in, uh, in shirt sleeves, if you will, and then we'll put on our uh, spacesuits in the afternoon and we'll strap in just like we would for a little launch and we'll be able to look over the exterior of the spacecraft. We'll do one more fit check like that just a little bit later, but by then the spacecraft will be underneath the shroud uh, ready to put on the rocket so we won't be able to see the outside of the spacecraft and that'll be after final loading and everything is done as well so we'll be able to see how everything is going to look when we crawl in uh, for launch day there's also a period of quarantine so we're just kind of uh, having some uh, some rest and relaxation but also uh, we'll study every day with our instructors that uh, come down with us and be fully as fully prepared as we can be when launch day comes relaxed prepared current and uh, and all ready to go so that's what we'll do thank you uh, Kevin, in Russian, please. Do you have any kind of fear that it's your first time? Zhenya? No, no fear, because uh, we've learned everything. We know it's uh, reliable. There may be some anxiety, but not fear. We're fully ready. Are there any differences between flying as a backup crew and as a primary crew? Of course. We were backups, we came back home, and this time we're going to fly. But there probably was a possibility. No, not really. This time we're going to fly. That time we went back. Thank you very much. Don't rush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
Don't let Trelkins down. Oh, never. And welcome back to Mission Control Houston. That again, some video of the upcoming Expedition 33 crew members. Uh, Kevin Ford, Oleg Nowitzki, and Evgeny Tarelkin as they were uh, preparing to head down to the Baikonur Cosmodrome. As Kevin was talking, they're going to be doing some of their final fit checks and launch preparations in advance of their uh, anticipated launch on Tuesday, October 23rd. Three will bring the International Space Station's uh, total crew count back up to six to allow for uh, full utilization of the station's systems and experiments on board. Uh, four will be joining fellow uh, NASA astronaut and current Expedition 33 commander Sonny Williams on board. Uh, that launch currently scheduled uh, to take place from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on Tuesday, October 23rd. So with all launches, we'll be bringing you live coverage here on NASA television. Uh, that launch scheduled to take place at 5.51 a.m. Central Time, 6.51 a.m. Eastern Time. Three will be launching in their Soyuz TMA-06M spacecraft. Uh, it'll be the 115th flight of a Soyuz spacecraft, the first being back in 1967. Uh, the Soyuz has been uh, upgraded multiple times throughout its uh, lifespan. Uh, this is the current TMA-M version. Currently the uh, only crew vehicle servicing the International Space Station, uh, and until the Dragon spacecraft had been the uh, only vehicle currently uh, allowing the down mass of uh, various experiment items and uh, delicate items that needed to be returned back down to the ground for further research and study. So uh, that spacecraft again scheduled to launch and bring these three crew members to the International Space Station a little bit later uh, this month in October. getting a good look at that station robotic arm there where um, which will be used uh, a little later uh, tomorrow morning uh, to grapple with the Dragon spacecraft and berth it to the Harmony node on the International Space Station. Uh, that Dragon spacecraft again which launched back on uh, Sunday night traveling to the International Space Station. It performed a, a number of uh, rendezvous burns today, three uh, to correct its orbit and put it uh, in its exact trajectory with the orbiting laboratory. All those burns were completed successfully. Uh, there's been a number of um, events throughout the uh, SpaceX launch. Uh, during the uh, ascent to orbit, the Falcon 9 rocket experienced uh, the main engine cutoff of one of its nine Merlin engines, uh, but the vehicle has been designed uh, exactly to account for such a loss. Uh, that Merlin engine uh, cut out a little prematurely, but the other eight were fired for a little bit longer during the first stage to uh, allow it to uh, reach the proper orbit.
Right now, that spacecraft uh, scheduled to arrive in the vicinity of the International Space Station tomorrow morning before it's grappling at about 6.22 a.m. Central Time. Here's another quick rundown of all the coverage events for tomorrow morning. We'll first bring you our grapple coverage starting at 3 a.m. all of these times in Central. Uh, with the grapple scheduled uh, a little over three hours later at 6.22. It'll be uh, grappled with the Space Station's robotic arm with NASA astronaut Sonny Williams and uh, Aki Hoshide from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency at the controls. Uh, once they finish that grapple, they'll uh, go through a series of checks and uh, ensure everything is uh, lined up and A-OK -okay before moving on to the actual berthing. We'll bring you our berthing coverage starting at 8.15 a.m. The Dragon spacecraft right now targeted to berth with the International Space Station at 8.40 a.m. Central Time. Here's a view of just exactly what we'll be expecting to see as that craft is uh, guided into its docking port on board the station. Uh, it's bringing up a little over 880 pounds of supplies to these crew members uh, on board a number of uh, different experiments uh, designed to support um, different biological uh, studies on board the station. Some of the uh, more interesting ones on board uh, include uh, something called uh, the resist tu tube, uh, which will help to evaluate how microgravity affects the growth of uh, cell walls inside of a plant. Um, scientists have found that about 50% of the en energy expended by uh, plants on uh, the Earth's surface is dedicated just, just to structural support, so just uh, keeping those plants up under the uh, pull of gravity. So understanding how the uh, different genes inside of plants help to control this energy expenditure uh, could have some uh, pretty serious implications for how well uh, plant life is uh, not only operated in microgravity, but also for uh, future genetically modified plants and food supply um, products down on the Earth's surface. This is a live view. One of the laptops on board the International Space Station is uh, Williams and Hoshide are going through some of their on-orbit training. Uh, they just wrapping up, they were doing some rendezvous and capture training with one of these simulators uh, on board the station as they walk through that. They'll also be uh, going over some of the vehicle ops, uh, and some of the uh, generic uh, operational content of managing this vehicle while it's docked to the International Space Station. They were also going through and reviewing uh, all the cargo that will be coming up. Uh, these astronauts thoroughly prepared uh, and trained before the arrival of each visiting vehicle. So two of our Expedition 33 crew members uh, training vigorously today as they prepare for all those operations tomorrow morning to guide the Dragon spacecraft into its final home on the International Space Station. Uh, the astronauts on board having already set up the, uh, the communication device known as the, uh, the Cuckoo, or the, uh, the COTS Ultra High Frequency Communications Unit. Uh, they'll also have a command panel on board the International Space Station where they can uh, interact with the Dragon spacecraft as they monitor its final approach. It'll also provide some ability for the crew to send commands to the spacecraft uh, during that important rendezvous and also during the departure phases of the mission. Once Dragon's in on its final approach with the station, the controllers here in Mission Control Houston and also the SpaceX team out in Hawthorne, California, do a final go-no-go uh, -no -go decision on uh, closing in the final gap between the two spacecraft. Uh, it'll bring in uh, the craft to a little over 800 feet away before using uh, 
Uh, it's got close range guidance systems, also a, s a series of uh, lasers known as LIDAR and then different thermal images. Uh, as controllers work to confirm the Dragon's position and also its uh, closing velocity, uh, these spacecraft will uh, often close in with the International Space Stations at uh, speeds that appear uh, relatively slow, even though they're uh, hurtling around the Earth at about 17,500 miles an hour. Their relative speeds between the two of them will uh, slow down to uh, rates as um, low as one-tenth of a meter per second at times. So after it's a slow fly-in, the astronauts will reach out with that Canada arm, which you can see here in the foreground, and grapple with the uh, berthing mechanism on board. There's a Dragon spacecraft. This will be done after the uh, craft has gone into its uh, hold and free drift position. That a quick look at uh, what a future Dragon SpaceX uh, crew vehicle, this uh, Dragon spacecraft currently being developed by uh, the SpaceX Corporation, um, currently is a cargo vehicle, but in the future they're hoping to uh, use it as a new crewed vessel for transport uh, to the International Space Station. SpaceX recently uh, one of the uh, recipients of the latest round of funding from that commercial crew uh, activity, along with Boeing and the uh, Sierra Nevada Corporation. Right now, the cargo iteration of the Dragon spacecraft, though, well on its way towards the International Space Station with that planned docking uh, tomorrow morning. Once it gets into its uh, final hold position, uh, it'll be about 32 feet away from the International Space Station. Uh, it'll be at what's known as the capture point, and then a final a uh, go-no-go -no -go decision between teams here in Mission Control Houston and the Dragon teams out in Hawthorne. Uh, we'll uh, give the go-ahead for our astronauts on board the International Space Station to reach out and capture Dragon. Uh, Aki Hoshide and Sunny Williams being at the uh, robotic controls. They'll use the 58-foot-long robotic arm known as Canada Arm 2 to reach out and grapple with that Dragon spacecraft. We'll wait about two hours after grappling uh, Dragon before uh, gently guiding in uh, the Dragon to the Earth-facing side of the Harmony module. Uh, they'll be guiding it to the common berthing mechanism, which is a, a docking port mechanism found on uh, all non-Russian um, modules on board the International Space Station. And then once it's uh, attached, it'll be bolted in and then a series of uh, leak checks will be done to ensure that there is a, a good mate between the two vehicles. And then uh, on the following day, uh, the crew will uh, pressurize the airlock between the uh, two vehicles and then open the hatch. Uh, and then over the next two and a half weeks, the crew will have time to uh, unload all the cargo from the Dragon spacecraft. Again, about 882 pounds of cargo being delivered to the International Space Station.
while we continue to look forward to the Dragon's arrival to the International Space Station. Also looking forward to that later October launch of our uh, next three Expedition 33 crew members who will uh, remain on board following the departure of our current commander Sonny Williams and her two crewmates uh, become the crew of Expedition 34. Why don't we take a look now at some of the uh, science and research that these astronauts are hoping to accomplish throughout their Expedition 33 and 34 increments on board the International Space Station. The work now underway on board the International Space Station is designed to support deep space exploration in the future and provide benefits on Earth today. The Expedition 33 crew members are working on experiments in astrophysics and Earth science, in education and in technology development, and in human physiology and performance. There's a myriad of things that are going on, you know, not only U.S., but European, uh, Japanese experiments. Um, there's experiments from all over the world that we'll be doing and hoping help some of the uh, human research that's going on. A top priority is learning how a prolonged stay in space affects the human body. Some of the data is gathered from observing how crew members operate in microgravity. Some of the data is gathered in the form of biological samples from the crew that will be examined on the ground after the flight. We will study the bone tissue pre-flight and post-flight. We'll perform blood tests. It's a large area for research. At the same time, throughout the mission, the crew members spend time each day in practical application of the best theories about how to counteract the negative effects of living in space, trying to prove concepts that will keep deep space explorers of the future healthy on missions that will last for years. This work also contributes to the station crew members' overall health and physical fitness, so they're better able to work with all the other experiments on board, including some that have a similar goal, such as a study of the Madaka fish. The importance of these very small fishes are they have bones and muscles, just like human beings. So what we're trying to do is have them uh, stay in space for a longer duration and then uh, bring them down and then take a look at their bone uh, structures and muscles and see the effect of microgravity. The crew members tend to the operation of that experiment and other investigations going on in the station's several laboratories, serving as the on-orbit hands for earthbound researchers working in a number of scientific disciplines. And those kinds of equipments will be uh, acting as lab assistants. The all kinds of media that have to be mixed and, you know, temperature has to be maintained. Certain time stamps will have to be kept. And everything needs to be done with a lot of precision and a lot of attention to detail. This platform in space supports all of that research, plus a whole slew of experiments on the outside of the space station that are constantly gathering data without the assistance of the human crew members. For example... We have the gym uh, exposed facility that, uh, that has some even NASA payloads outside. Um, for example, Maxi, an X-ray, an all-sky X-ray detector on the outside. Uh, we're getting ready to take up scan test bed on HTV, which will go on like uh, an external logis logistics platform out there. And of course, alpha magnetic spectrometer sitting out on the starboard side as well. Taking advantage of being in space to gather information on cosmic particles for researchers who are trying to learn what the universe is made of and how it began. For all of the crew members, there is one other wide-ranging, high-priority task that must be completed so that these dozens of scientific investigations can proceed. And the task is uh, to maintain the space station in due condition so that all the units and all the apparatus perform as they should. And should any of those uh, break down, to be able to fix it. That means performing regular maintenance work being ready to repair hardware that breaks down, and possibly doing a spacewalk if needed to tend to the equipment on the station's exterior, although no spacewalks are in the plan for this increment. There will be a good bit of traffic at the space station late this year. Along with the goings and comings of three uncrewed Russian cargo ships, 
Williams, Malenchenko, and Hoshide depart the station in their Soyuz spacecraft in mid-November to conclude Expedition 33. Ford becomes commander for Expedition 34, and in early December, he and Novitsky and Tarelkin welcome a Soyuz carrying three experienced space flyers, station veteran Roman Romanenko of Roscosmos, and first-time station crew members, NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn and Canadian Space Agency astronaut Chris Hadfield. They will all be on hand to support the planned arrivals of two American commercial cargo ships, SpaceX's Dragon and Orbital Science Corporation's Cygnus, which are expanding the station's fleet of delivery vehicles. They fly up underneath the uh, space station just within reach of our uh, Canada Arm 2 robotic arm. We'll fly over top of a pin and grapple that, that, uh, that vehicle and berth it to the, the p bottom port on Node 2, right under the U.S. segment, and uh, have access to the cargo. Those cargoes, tons of food, fuel, oxygen and air, clothing, work supplies, and science hardware, are vital to maintaining the expedition crew members themselves and completing the mission of the International Space Station to prepare human explorers and their tools for the deep space exploration missions that are moving off the drawing boards right now. The ability of the humans to, to not only function in space, but be very functional when they arrive at their destination, those are the kinds of things we're learning from the science. Fuel technologies, fuel transfer technologies, and uh, all the things we can learn about the space environment are all valuable to us for pressing on out. And welcome back inside of Mission Control Houston. That again, a look at some of the uh, accomplishments we're looking forward to throughout this 33, uh, 34 expedition increments. Right now, we're getting a look inside of the uh, International Space Station there. Expedition 33 Commander Sonny Williams, uh, NASA astronaut, on her second flight. She also flew on board the station uh, during Expeditions 14 and 15. She's been spending much of her day uh, prepping for that upcoming uh, SpaceX uh, arrival uh, scheduled to take place tomorrow morning. She'll be at the robotic controls along uh, with Japanese astronaut Aki Hoshide. He's been on board the International Space Station since uh, July 16th when she docked uh, in her Soyuz TMA-05M spacecraft. Uh, they docked on July 16th and opened the hatches a few late hours later in the wee hours of the morning on July 17th. Uh, she's currently scheduled to stay on board until uh, about mid-November when she'll return back down to Earth with her uh, current crewmates, Yuri Malenchenko and Aki Hoshide, uh, formally bringing an end to Expedition 33 and starting Expedition 34, whose astronauts, uh, Oleg Novitsky, Evgeny Turelkin, and Kevin Ford, are looking forward to their launch uh, just about two weeks from now. Immediately following today's broadcast, we'll have the NASA video file where we'll have some uh, more footage of the crew departure to Kazakhstan following uh, Lugnovitsky, Evgeny Turelkin, and Kevin Ford as they depart uh, from the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia, down to uh, the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where they'll begin their final launch preparations in advance of their uh, October 23rd launch in their Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, so be sure to check that video file out uh, again immediately following today's International Space Station update for more of an inside look at uh, what these astronauts are going through and their preparations up through launch. Also on tap for tomorrow morning will be the mission coverage of the uh, Dragon SpaceX uh, commercial resupply mission, which is currently ongoing. We'll be bringing you uh, live grappling coverage uh, beginning at 3 a.m. Central Time tomorrow. All this setting up for the eventual grapple uh, with that Dragon spacecraft using the station's Canada arm, targeted to take place at 6.22 a.m. 
uh, will break away for a little while while uh, controllers down here on the ground and also in Hawthorne. Uh, SpaceX Missile Control uh, confirmed that the vehicle is in a good configuration before moving on to berthing. We'll break back in with berthing coverage at 8.15 a.m. Central Time, setting up for uh, berthing to the International Space Station, currently targeted at 8.40 a.m. Central. Two of our Expedition 33 crew members, Aki Hoshide and Sonny Williams, spending much of their day uh, preparing for the, uh, their upcoming robotic operations with the Dragon spacecraft. Uh, throughout their day, they uh, did some on-orbit training using some of the laptop simulators on board the station as they walked through some of the rendezvous and capture operations. Uh, they'll be at the controls for the space station's robotic arm throughout the morning tomorrow uh, as they'll be responsible for uh, making the grapple, and reaching out and grabbing hold of that Dragon spacecraft and then guiding it into its docking compartment on the Earth-facing side of the Harmony module. Two also going over uh, some of their standard operations checkouts uh, for just managing the vehicle while it's docked to the International Space Station. Uh, Sonny Williams there on the right was also uh, working on getting the Dragon's vestibule uh, outfitting kit set up for all those operations once it's docked uh, with the International Space Station. Uh, the two also going over some of the uh, cargo lists and uh, unpacking uh, procedures once Dragon uh, has been docked to the International Space Station. We'll have uh, about two and a half weeks to get the 882 pounds of supplies uh, off of the uh, visiting craft before uh, loading in uh, almost double that, about 1,600 pounds of supplies that the Dragon will be returning back down to Earth uh, once it undocks and re-enters the Earth's atmosphere for a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean. That spacecraft, again, scheduled to bring back about twice as much as it's bringing up. Uh, of the 800 pounds that Dragon will be delivering to the International Space Station, about uh, the the largest portion of that will be uh, items dedicated directly to scientific research on different experiments, uh, bringing up a, a number of uh, experiment hardware devices to support our ongoing research in plant cell biology and also human biotechnology and uh, various materials technology demonstrations. And also, again, for the, uh, the actual return supplies, the vast bulk of that also being dedicated directly to scientific research. Uh, the Dragon will be delivering uh, over 860 pounds of uh, scientific research hardware back down to researchers here on the ground. Uh, that down mass capability, very vital for many of the ongoing research experiments, uh, especially many of these um, biological experiments that look to use the astronauts themselves as sort of guinea pigs and uh, research subjects. Uh, many of their samples uh, are stored on board the International Space Station inside of uh, any number of different uh, cryogenic freezers for extended periods of time. Uh, they require a little bit more uh, space and weight to return back down to Earth and uh, since the retirement of the space shuttle that hasn't been uh, possible, but this uh, Dragon spacecraft now uh, providing that capability uh, to the United States once again. So d a lot of scientists really looking forward to getting their hands on some of this uh, research hardware. Uh, also in that 1,600 pounds of supplies, uh, bringing back down a few hundred pounds of vehicle hardware for uh, ongoing study down here on the ground. Generally, uh, when the visiting vehicles have been leaving the International Space Station, three other ones currently servicing the uh, International Space Station, including uh, one from uh, each of the partner agencies, uh, the Russian Progress Resupply Ship, uh, carrying up uh, uh, the bulk of supplies over the uh, fairly regular um, 
lifetime of the International Space Station, the Progress 48 currently docked there uh, to the piers docking compartment on the uh, Earth-facing side of this VESA service module. Also having been carrying supplies to the International Space Station has been the Japanese HTV transfer vehicle, uh, which undocked and burned up in the Earth's atmosphere uh, not too long ago, and also the European ATV. Uh, all three of uh, those mentioned also unmanned cargo craft, which um, deliver supplies to the International Space Station, but uh, have no down mass or uh, ability to return items back down to the surface. All three uh, burn up in the Earth's atmosphere upon their reentry. So uh, this Dragon uh, fairly unique in its capability to return items uh, to a safe splashdown in uh, the Pacific Ocean. So this will uh, bring an end to today's International Space Station update. As we've been mentioning, be sure to follow along with us tomorrow morning as we continue our coverage of SpaceX's historical uh, first commercial resupply mission to the International Space Station. Another quick rundown of all our coverages. Uh, the first one kicking off at 3 a.m. Central Time tomorrow. Uh, so be sure to follow along as we uh, look to these astronauts to guide in that Dragon spacecraft for its uh, eventual grapple and berthing and docking to the International Space Station. So be sure to check out the video file immediately following today's broadcast and all of those live events tomorrow morning. And we'll be back with more International Space Station update tomorrow. So for now, that we'll wrap up and sign off. This is Mission Control Houston.